Stephen Joyce, I think we've got you joining us from Sky City. Are you, are you there? Can you hear me? I can hear you, John. Yeah, can thank, you hear me? Yeah, I can. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we really appreciate it. Uh, a really strong start. No problems at all. Um, for the National Party, 15.3% of the days. yeah, exactly. 15.3% of the results yeah. counted. 46.2 for the Nats, 36.5 for Labor, seven for New Zealand First, and six for the Greens. What's your take of what the advance vote count is telling you? Oh, look, truly, John, it's a bit hard to tell because unless you know, I, I'm not actually clear on how much of this is the advanced yeah. vote, whether it's all advanced vote, um, or whether it's some from today as well. Uh, and um, so I'm, I'm just a little bit uh, hesitant to make too many observations out of it. It's early days, obviously you're, you're happy to have that percentage point in front, but we're only 15% counted. So, uh, you know, as, as a naturally nervous disposition at this time on election night, this is my fifth. Um, I'm not going to rush out and make any predictions at this point. No, and you're absolutely right. It's a milkshake. It's some advanced voting. It's some small provincial yeah. electorates, which obviously historically yeah. have favoured the Nats. So you would expect to start strongly. Where did your polling have you at? What sort, because my understanding is your polling had you in front, but what sort of gap were you being told yeah. there was? Well, I think both us and Labor had us about five points in front. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, those two public polls had us a bit more in front. Uh, and, you know, pay your money and take your pick. Um, and then, of course, it's, there was quite a lot of soft votes, so we'll just see what people uh, made up their minds on the, on the day. Uh, and uh, and I, that's why I think it's, it's probably subject to change a bit through the course of the evening, uh, just because of the nature of the campaign. There's been so much change through the campaign. Uh, it's all about where everybody ended up when the music stopped, so to speak. Yes, I have two wonderful colleagues sitting beside me, Mihi Narangi Forbes and our political editor Jane Patterson. Jane would love to ask you a question. Um, here she is. Sure, go right ahead, Jane. Hi, Stephen. What do you say to those who... How are you? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? <laughs> I'm so far just nervous. I've got my rabbit's foot and I'm crossing my fingers and all that stuff. Just the usual on election night. <laughs> That's right, yeah, no different. What do you say to those who have accused you of running a campaign of misinformation um, with the 11.7 fiscal hole and, and then you, your ads and that sort of thing? Do you stand by the way that you and Bill English have run this campaign? Absolutely, and I completely reject any suggestion of misinformation. Uh, actually, every party deserves to have its, uh, have its policies and its issues tested. And that's actually about a robust campaign. What I've loved about this campaign is it's been about the things that people care about. It's been about tax policy. It's been about economic policy and, and fiscal policy and all those things. Uh, actually, you and I both remember that 2014 struggled to be about any of that. Um, it was an obsession with, with, uh, with Kim.com and his mates. And, and even 2011 struggled at time to be like that as well. So um, I think it's good that we ended up in a robust debate about the actual issues. And I certainly stand by the way we've campaigned. One thing that does look to be different this time is the allies that you might potentially have after tonight. Um, obviously United Future out of the picture, the Māori Party potentially in yep. some trouble. What are your thoughts on potentially working with I Mr Peters and to... New Zealand First? I just think it's too early to say at this point, mm -hmm. Jane. I mean, I, I think, because one of the things that when those really small parties early on, you know, depending on whether, they're, whether their uh, seats have shown up at all, so, for example, I, I, mean, I don't know, you can t perhaps tell me, but I haven't seen much out of the Māori seats yet. So it's hard to make a judgment of how the Māori Party is actually going because um, you know, their vote tends to be concentrated in the Māori seats. And, mm. and, um, and we ha I haven't seen much from any individual Māori seats unless you can enlighten me. So, and they often tend to be quite late in the evening. So I think it's just a bit early for those sorts of judgments to be made. Similarly, uh, you know, where the Greens will end up, where, where, uh, where the others will end up, how much uh, wasted vote there'll be, I have no idea. Oh. I know about as much about it as you do, but, um, but it's good to have this chat anyway. <laughs> yeah, very good to have the chat. We appreciate it. We've got Nick Smith standing by. Mr Smith, if you can hear us, we'll be with you in about one minute. But uh, Mr Joyce, Mihi Narangi Forbes has a question for you. Here she is. Oh, Mr Joyce, sure. Kilda, how are yep. you t this evening? I just wanted to enlighten you on some of those uh, Māori seats, if I could. Uh, I know they're between right. 5 and 15. One's up at 16% counted. The no Māori Party candidates right. in front of any of them. Uh, you've had a long working relationship with the Māori Where's Party. Where's Wairiki? Uh, Wairiki, Mr Flavel is behind. He is behind uh, Tāmati Coffee in that seat. Um, not by much, but uh, okay. 
and there's not a lot, yep, and it's only about 9% of yeah. the vote counted, but he is ahead, yeah, and Palm to Coffee has early, been a, ahead in, in that seat the whole time. Um, that, is, that would be an issue for you not having the Māori Party to work with? Well, I hope they get there because um, you know, I think they do a lot for Māoridom uh, and I think uh, the Parliament would be uh, would be a lesser place without them. Uh, but, you know, the public will make their call over the course of the evening, um, but certainly my working relationship with Tuarua and Marama um, has, has been great. Um, and, but again, so we, we don't have the answers to those questions. The public will make their choices, but um, for my money, um, you know, they really add something to Māori politics and, and it would be a very disappoint big disappointment on the night if they didn't make it back. Steve, uh, Stephen Joyce, thank you so much for joining us live from the National Party HQ, which is Sky City.